in part three of sequences, I'm going to show you how to find and use the nth term in a geometric sequence. So a geometric sequence is just when you're multiplying by the same number throughout that sequence to find the next term. So if we look at question one, these are the numbers in the sequence, 2, 4, 8, 16, and 32. You should be able to see each time you're multiplying the numbers by 2 to work out the next number in that sequence. So 2 multiplied by 2 is 4, 4 multiplied by 2 is 8, 8 multiplied by 2 is 16, and so on. So if you needed to find the next term in that sequence, you would take 32, multiply it by 2, and it would give you 64. So I'm just going to show you how sometimes it can be easy to just spot the nth term in a geometric sequence. And then I will show you the general formula, which will help you work out the nth term for all geometric sequences. Okay, so because we're multiplying by positive 2 each time, in the nth term, you should see 2 to the power of something within it. Okay. And if you look at the position numbers, n, which I've written along the top here, you should be able to see that when you change the power here to n, the position number, it generates the numbers in that sequence. So 2 to the power of 1 gives you 2. 2 to the power of 2, so 2 squared, gives you 4. And 2 to the power of 3, 2 cubed, gives you 8. So to generate the numbers in this sequence, you take the number 2 and you raise it to the power of the position of the number in the sequence. Okay, so because that's the rule for finding the numbers in the sequence, that is the nth term. I'm just going to show you now how to find the nth term using this time the general formula. So the general formula is a n, that just means the nth term, is equal to a1 a1 is the first term in the sequence, so the first number in your sequence. And then you have to multiply that by r, which is the common ratio. And the common ratio is the number that you're multiplying by each time. So in question 1, it would be positive 2. And then you raise the common ratio to the power n minus 1. Okay, so the power is always n minus 1. So if we look at question 1, um, we want to work out the nth term. You take the first term, a1, so here it would be positive 2, and then you multiply it by the common ratio, which is also, just by coincidence, positive 2, and then you raise that second 2 to the power of n minus 1. Now, we can use the rules of indices to simplify this expression. 2 is the same as 2 to the power of 1, and when you're multiplying two numbers together that are the same, you need to add their powers. So if I add 1 and n minus 1, it simplifies to 2 to the power of n, Okay, which is the nth term we worked out earlier. Now let's have a look at question 2. So we're going to use the formula again to work out the nth term. So remember, to work out the nth term, you need to, first of all, take the first term in the sequence. Okay, so this time, the first term in the sequence is the number 1. Okay, so you can write that down first. Then you have to multiply this number with the common ratio. And remember, the common ratio is the number that you're multiplying by each time in the sequence. So in this sequence, again, we're multiplying by 2. Okay, because 1 times 2 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 4 is 8, and so on. Okay, so the common ratio is still positive 2, and the power, again, is n minus 1. Now, if you multiply something by 1, it just stays the same. So, 1 multiplied by 2 to the power of n minus 1 is just 2 to the power of n minus 1. So, that's the nth term for question 2. Now, if you had to work out um, the 100th term, okay, so the 100th number in that sequence, you would just change the position number n to 100 and substitute it into your nth term. So 100 take away 1 is 99. So you would work out 2 to the power of 99. You can put that in your calculator. And it would give you the 100th term, the 100th number in that sequence. Okay? Now, question 3. So again, I'm going to use the formula. 
So, to work out the nth term for question number three, we have to start by writing down the first term in the sequence. So, this time it's positive eight. And then, again, multiply by the common ratio. And, by coincidence, it's two again, okay? We're still multiplying by two to find the next term in the sequence, okay? Eight times two is 16, 16 times two is 32, and so on, okay? So it's a geometric sequence. So I write down the common ratio two, raise it to the power of n minus one, and I can simplify this expression because eight can be re rewritten as two cubed. Two times two times two is eight. And then, because I've got the same base number here and here, I can add their powers together, like I did earlier. So, that would give me 3 plus n minus 1 simplifies to n plus 2. Okay, because 3 plus negative 1 gives you positive 2. So, there's the nth term for question 3. Now, on to question 4. So, we're using the formula again to work out the nth term. And the first term in this sequence is 5, okay? So, you start by writing that down. So, you're just substituting that into the formula here in place of A1. And then you're multiplying by the common ratio. Now, this time, the common ratio is different. This time, we're multiplying by 5. Okay, so 5 times 5 is 25. 25 times 5 is 125, and so on. So, we need to multiply by 5, and then raise it to the power of n minus 1. So, it's a bit like that one I showed you earlier, okay? You can simplify, because you're multiplying these two numbers, which are the same, together, and you're adding their powers. So, if you add 1 and n minus 1 together, it simplifies to 5 to the power of n. Okay, so it's like question 1. Okay, you're just taking the number 5 and raising it to the power of the position number n. So 5 to the power of 1 is 5. 5 to the power of 2, 5 squared, 5 times 5 is 25. 5 to the power of 3 is 125. Okay, so that's a slightly easier one. Now, let's look at the last question, number five. So, this time, the first term is positive three. So, you can write that down first. Then, let's look for the common ratio. So, it looks like we're multiplying by five again. Okay, so, three times five is 15. 15 times five is 75, and so on. Okay, so, the common ratio is five. So, it's three multiplied by five to the power of n minus 1, and we can't simplify this one, okay? We can't rewrite the number 3 as 5 to the power of something, so that is the final answer.